So I'm going to go ahead and skip the really boring intro that it seems like you guys like 50%, 60% of you guys skip anyways, and we're just going to skip right to the good part. We're going to hack some binaries, learn some reverse engineering, and uh, just kind of hack shit. That's about it. All right, so I found this really cool site called crackmes.one. It's got a ton of these beginner to advanced, for lack of a better word, kind of CTFs for reverse engineering. Um, you know, kind of a lot of the general crack me's that you've seen. That's actually what I'm going to do this time is a crack me called register me in your name, which I don't know if that's a hint or not, but I went ahead and downloaded the file and ran it just to make sure that it works. And it does. When we run it, it pops up with this unregistered software box and then it says, please crack me and crack me. So I'm assuming what we're going to do is find some way to register it but you know, I've, I've got no idea. I'm going to uh, kind of fast forward through all of the process and explain what I'm doing later on so that you don't have to watch me fumble for a couple of hours because there's no fun in that. Okay, so I ran the strings command and it spit up a bunch of gibberish that isn't super useful. What did I find? I spit it out into a text file and you saw me kind of scrolling through that. I found, you know, kernel 32, which is standard, you know, not really anything interesting. And I found the strings that we saw in the dialog box. So that's kind of interesting. We might want to watch for that. You know, when it hits that, that means that basically we've already passed through the check to see if you know, we're registered or not. So, you know, that that's kind of like a, you know, you've gone too far moment. And then we see keyfile.txt. Now that's interesting because we didn't see that in the dialog box and we don't have a keyfile.txt. So let's see if we can find something that creates a file. Are we searching in the right one? Let me make sure that I'm searching in this one. Hmm. Oh, okay. So we did find create file. So that's interesting. We, we've got an occurrence where it's accessing the file system. So, you know, that's, that, that's a, of note at least. So we've got create file W. Do we have anything command? Yeah, so we've got command line, get command line A and W. So it may be looking for command line arguments. I don't know exactly how those functions work. So basically what this is, is you know we're, we're assuming that this is the create file functions that's being called within the executable. Um, you know, as far as I know, it doesn't create any files when we run it. So let's make sure it doesn't create anything in that directory. So unless we just downloaded malware off of this site, hopefully we didn't. But you know, as far as we know, it doesn't create any files. So we've got to figure that out. And really there's nowhere else to go but your favorite program in the entire world, or at least mine, Ida. I have absolutely very little experience with Ida, but I didn't feel brave enough to jump into Ghidra. I downloaded it, took a look at it, and just was not brave enough. So I've got enough kind of, I guess, experience with Ida to be dangerous, but that's about it. So we load it in, get to our start function, and we've got an immediate call right here. But instead of just jumping into it, I'm going to start searching for these interesting strings that we've got in our notes and see if we can't hunt anything off of that. An interesting methodology that I learned from, I think, a blog post or a friend of mine 
is you kind of start from the ends, like your end goal, and you work your way back. So in this case, registered to would be our end goal. We want to get to the point where we reach that message that it says we're registered. So I'm going to search for the string registered to and see if we can't find where that's actually called within the execution chain. And if we can, we're going to try to work our way backwards from there. And now I'm going to zoom into hacker mode and you guys can watch probably an hour or two of work condensed into hopefully a couple of seconds. So we found the first instance of registered to right here. Um, Ida is helpful enough to throw a comment in saying that that's what this refers to. So we've got success text is what I ended up naming it just to kind of you know keep it clear in my head. So eventually this is passed as an argument down to the dialogue you know functionality built within Windows, and you know that tells you that you know it's registered. So working backwards. Let's see, we've got it right here again. So that's it still being passed, you know, basically it's being passed down the execution chain and we come to a fork here. So this is a decision that's gotta be made right here. So I thought at first that this comparison, you know, it's the first comparison that I found before we get to basically the success chain. So I, you know, I'm referring to this as the success chain because that's, that's where all of the calls to the registered to, which is our, our successful parameter, you know, that's, that's where those are being referenced. Going back to here, you know, I thought that this was the first, the, the first comparison or, or the first you know, fork here for um, you know, the successful chain. And it actually, the, the decision is basically being made right here. So we're calling create file with this key file dot text file right here. And if it returns something, I haven't really figured this out. So I've got a question mark right here. If it returns something, then it's going to pass us down this chain. This chain right here is the actual successful chain right here. Um, so that's, that's what we're trying to achieve is getting down on this chain. So this comparison is the important one. This comparison is you know basically comparing this string right here, this long string of Fs, to the result of create file A. So you know, basically what happens, at least in this syntax for assembly, is that the result of this function is stored in EAX. So EAX is the register. After EAX contains that, you know, that return value, it's moved into the register ESI. Then ESI is compared to this long string of Fs and based on whether or not those two are equal, it's going to jump down either the success chain or if we move down here, it's going to return down the failure chain somewhere. All right, so it's trying to create a file and what I'm seeing here is that this normally to me, the, the kind of thought process that I've got is this would be an error. I would think, you know, if, if, if something returns with something other than zero, that would be an error in most cases. You know, it, m most code, you know, returns zero if it's successful. And I would assume that Windows would follow that, you know, you know, that standard practice. So what it looks like to me is it's testing if it can create a file. And if it can't create that file, for whatever reason, then we're going down our, you know, basically our successful tree here. 
And if it can, for whatever reason, it can create that file, you know, it's going to return zero and you know, these two things aren't going to be equal. So we're going to run down the unsuccessful tree. Um, so why would it not be able to create a file? You know, either the file already exists or it's in a folder where it doesn't have proper permissions. You know, the easiest thing that I can think of for us to test is to go ahead and, you know, create that file and see if that's, you know, if that's actually right. So let's go ahead and remove all of our breakpoints. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to assume that it's trying to create the file in the same directory as the executable. Honestly, I, I can't think of really any reason why that would be the case. It's probably in here somewhere that, you know, it, it, it defines where the, the file is, but I can't see any actual, you know, different file locations. So I'm going to assume that it's going to check the, you know, the same directory that the, you know, the, the executable itself is in. So we're going to create a new text document and name it keyfile.txt. And we're going to run this again. We're actually going to run it inside of Ida. Let's see, does it have to have something in it? Maybe. Let's go ahead and type Viking subscribe to Viking tech. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Make sure that saved correctly. Yep. So I'm assuming that, you know, I, again, I'm assuming that I'm right here. Uh, very well, maybe an unsafe assumption, but that's what I'm assuming. Yep, unregistered. We've got a, oh, keyfile.txt.txt. That might be our problem. I don't know why exactly it did that. Let's go ahead and rename it to just key file. And let's see if that works. Got it saved correctly. Let's run it. Does that hit our breakpoint? I'm gonna continue running. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's follow the execution chain through. So we've hit our breakpoint here and we are hitting that other arrow. So what I'm what what I'm thinking is, and you know I'm sure there will be smarter people in the comments who can tell me. What I'm assuming is is it tried to create the file, and you know it should have returned a handle to the created file, and because there already exists a file called keyfile.txt, it can't do that. So it returns this error code, you know this you know string of f's, as a result, and since those two are zeros it's going to you know run down this chain right here and uh you know as we can see in this chain it, it reads the file and um you know it actually runs down this chain right here which actually is you know it's pretty cool i'm assuming let's see where it actually reads the file so it reads the file there i think maybe yeah so we're running down the chain and it, you know it actually ends up reading the file out and you know gives us our our message so that's the uh, <laughs> the first crack me. Apparently that one was easy. So you know we're we're going to continue to do stuff like this until I actually feel confident in what I'm talking about, and then we'll move on to I guess the real shit. So if you guys enjoyed this, just let me know. You know I'm I'm basically revamping a series that I did really badly a long time ago, that a lot of people enjoyed, and that you know I, I guess garnered enough attention for me to kind of revisit it. You know, binary exploitation is something I've been wanting to do for a while. So let me know if this is something that you enjoy. I'll do more of them and you can kind of follow along on my learning journey for this. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the content, want to see more of it, 
Make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to find out whenever I upload more of this stuff. Thank you guys.